quick summary. If we sketch a normal curve, we label our z values in the usual manner, and then if we have some variable x that we know has a mean and a standard deviation, for example, this might be the mean of the size of my sips, this the standard deviation of the size of my sips. Um, then we can relabel the axis or dual label the axis with x values, the mean corresponding to z equals zero, <coughs> adding standard deviation to the mean to correspond to z equals one because the z values are your number of standard deviations from the mean. Okay? <coughs> so when z is two, how far are you from the mean? You're two standard deviations from the mean. What's the mean? 16. How far is two standard deviations? Well, the standard deviation is two, so two standard deviations is four. So we'd have, we'd be four units, four x units from the mean. So we'd have 20 here. Okay, that's not too difficult to understand. People seem to be doing pretty well with that. Now, we want to know, well, okay, a little, little, little background on this. You know, I just wrote out the equations for the n of z function, and this is just the graph of the n of z function. Okay, n of z is the normal function, uh, standard normal function of z. Um, the rigorous definition is it's 1 over squared or 2 pi e to the negative z squared over 2. This is derived by a lot of fairly complicated mathematics that's well beyond where anybody is right now, so we can't discuss it. But it's really just what you get if you take a histogram with the number of heads for a large number of flips. This is not a large number of flips, but you see how a normal curve might fit the histogram for the number of heads on, you know, flips of four coins or something like that. Okay? Um, if you use a very large number of heads, you get a much better fit to the normal curve, and eventually as the number of heads approaches infinity, uh, the central part of that curve, well, the whole curve actually, but only the central part, um, becomes relevant. Okay, you have, in the limited case, you have a normal curve, okay? Um, and that's where this comes from. You don't really have to know that. The point four is just a very, good approximation to 1 over the square root of 2 pi, which is an irrational number and you can't write it out as a decimal. You can write out a lot of places in that decimal. <coughs> if you do, you see, again, it's very close to 0.4. Okay. The total area under the normal curve then is 1 because of this number in front. Okay, this is the number you got to put in front of this. This is what you got to put out here to mimic the shape of your histograms. And there you have it. Um, now, we want to find the probability that x falls between 17.2 and 18.6. So if I take a sip, what's the probability of that sip lying within this range? Okay. Well, that probability is just equal to the area of this region of the curve, the region that you get between this value of x and this value of x. Now, to calculate that area, or to estimate it using, let's say, a trapezoidal approximation, um, you would need to know what this distance is and what this distance is. In order to get this distance and this distance, you've got to know what z to put into the function, and you don't know z. What you know is the x values, so you've got to have a way of translating from x values to z values. Now, there's a fairly simple formula for that, but the formula doesn't contain any insight. So we're trying to do this. We're trying to do everything we can here by insight. So let's get a little insight into what that might mean. Um, okay, so here I've drawn z values from 0 to 2 and beyond, but I've labeled the z values 1 and 2. And I've labeled the x values uh, for the corresponding to z equals 1 and 2, those would be 18 and 20, and also z value 0, the corresponding x value is 16. Now, if our x value is 17.2, the argument is pretty simple. 
that means that we're 1.2 units on this side of the mean. How many standard deviations is that? Well, the x standard deviation is 2, and if we're 1.2 units, well, that's less than a standard deviation. What fraction of a standard deviation? Well, that's 1.2 over 2, which is 0.6 standard deviations. Z is the number of standard deviations, so Z equals 0.6 when x equals 17.2. What about 18.6? Well, that's 2.6 units from the mean. How many standard deviations is that? Well, standard deviation for x, again, is 2. So we divide the 2.6 by 2, and we get 1.3 standard deviations. So z at this point is 1.3. Now, how do we estimate or how do we get our approximate area, the area of this trapezoid? We plug in 0.6, we get into the n of z function, we get approximately 0.33. We plug in 1.3, we get approximately 0.17. So now our trapezoid takes shape. We have 0.33 here, 0.17 here. Our average graph altitude then is what we get when we add these and divide by 2. And I said 0.26 which is really dumb. I don't know. I, I was debating between 3.3 and 3.4 here. I think it might be 3.4. So as I said before, check me. If it was 3.4, then this would be 2.26. If this is 0 0.33, it really should be 0.25, so you might make that correction. Uh, but that's the average graph altitude. The width is 1.3 minus 0.6. And uh, there is a clear decimal in that 1.3, but I sure don't see it on the 0.6. That's 0.7. So the width times the average graph altitude is 0.26 times 0 0.7, 0.182. We get then about 18%. And it would still round off to 18% if we use 0.25 there. Um, okay. Meaning that previously I estimated by ballparking this, this looks like a little less than half of the area on this side of the middle of the curve, and the curve being symmetric from here over is 50%. If this was half of this half, it would be 25%. I decided it was a little lower. I said 23%. My calculation tells me I didn't do a very good job of estimating that. It's really 18%. That's the area, and that's the probability that a randomly chosen SIP out of a large number of SIPs uh, if this is the mean and standard deviation, would be between this and this.